We get the user to meme it. Dans le stand aussi, il y a un renouvellement. Prenons la route qui mène à la ville de Tisha. For me, one of the most magical media's radio. As a child, I love playing, playing around with my dad's radio in a garage, looking for broadcasts with strange languages, weird computer noises, and illegal fire stations, playing crappy Dutch music on old turntables. It, it still excites me to receive foreign stations with my cheap ra shortwave radio, stations from Italy, Poland, Romania, or France. I imagine some ty ty stereotypical French guy driving in a Citroën and listening to the same station as I am singing loudly to some 80s pop song. So for you, man. <laughs> Driving his car, getting a pocket, you know. But well, I hate French music. But, <laughs> but man, I love shortwave radio. I love that you receive little snippets of sound, music and voices from all over. I love the fact that the smallest percentage of the noise you hear while tuning is cosmic noise, radio waves from outer space, intergalactic radio. Right here. But what I love most is the occult side of short wave radio, the strange radio chatter, digital sounding noise, Morse code, possibly from a navy ship, and most of all, number stations. first hit messages like this in the 60s, they thought that they were probably listening to some kind of joke. Some wacko hippie in a radio tower in the backyard, transmitting a tape of his wife saying some random numbers. Or maybe it were drug dealers sending coded messages, signaling when to smuggle the dough over the border. But more and more number stations were received through the years, with different voices, different languages. Patterns could be found in the radio frequencies and in the time of the broadcast. For worldwide broadcast, you need powerful transmitters, which was a costly business at the time, and it was a cold war. One scenario seemed the most likely. The stations must be run by secret intelligence agencies. There are still no official com confirmations of the number stations, but from the snippets of information gathered in the years, it is believed that the number stations broadcast encrypted information to agents in the field, the spies, during the Cold War, secret services of both the communist and capitalist side started using number stations. MI6 in the UK, KGB in the Soviet Union, Bundesnachrichtungsdienst in West Germany, and the Stasi in Eastern Germany. And when the Cold War ended, some number stations disappeared, but others kept broadcasting. Even new number stations appeared on the airwaves, mostly from Asia countries like China, North Korea, and Taiwan. And even today, you can still listen to them on the shortwave radio. I, 
recorded this last week. The broadcast of classic number stations consists of a few standard parts. First there is a call sign, usually a little melody or some repeating words. This call sign is used to fight the station and to tune in properly to the frequency. That one keeps me awake at night. <laughs> After you hear this, you hear the agent ID, a number which indicates to which agent the secret message is meant for. After this message size is told, like 11 groups of five numbers or 20 groups of five numbers. And then finally, the message. Most of the time messages appear in groups of five numbers, so it's easy for the listener to remember and write down. The end of the broadcast will be indicated by an end sign, like 000 or just end. In the early day, real voices were used to record the messages, but in the 70s, most number stations switched to voice computers, which could be automatically operated. And they were more reliable than the young se secretary who used to, used to say the numbers. A wider range of languages is used, from English and Spanish to Czech, Russian and German. Some number stations even use multiple languages in different broadcasts. Broadcasts of the number stations have set dates, dates and time easy for the spies to tune into. The agents in the field owns a little book with the codes to translate the numbers back into usable language. Each page of the code in, in the book corresponds to with only one broadcast of the station and after the transmission this page has, has to be destroyed. Quite James Bondish. Um, the use of the number stations into the 21st century shows the power of the system. Even is it in this di digi digital information age with sophisticated agencies like the NSA that in can inter intercept almost all communications, the, the number stations remain an extremely secure way of sending information. You don't need phone lines or internet connections, or send a microfilm or letters with secret ink. There's only a broadcast and of a weird sequence of numbers and an agent with a radio. Detecting somebody listening to a radio is near to impossible, so an agent in the field is leaving no trails leading back to him. What fascinates me so much about the number stations is that it is using such an open medium. Most secret service stuff happens behind the scenes, somewhere in dark alleys at night. But number stations are just out there, on public airways, for everybody to listen to. Radio amateurs have built extensive internet for with schedules, frequencies, and nicknames for the number stations. But without the codebook, the number of, the number of sta number stations are completely useless. As a last part on number stations, I'd like to return to the ones it, it is meant for. The agent on, in the field, maybe some spy in here in The Hague, bounced away from his home. In 10 minutes from now, he sets up his shortwave radio, grabs his little book of code, and starts writing the numbers down. Messages from home. Poison Mark Rutte. Blow up Mark Dam. Or maybe birthday, birthday wishes from Putin himself. <laughs>
I want to know uh, what the fuck is going on with that Russian station, which transmits since, I don't know, 1975 or something, and it doesn't stop transmitting. Yeah, it's one of the number stations, and yeah, probably from uh, Russian secret service. Um, well, they still have spies around here, uh, also in Europe. So last year we had the nuclear summit, and there, and uh, it's a very big coincidence that during the nuclear summit uh, there was this fisher boat from Russia in the uh, Scheveningen uh, uh, <laughs> harbor. Well, they said like, yeah, it's a, it's a fish, fishing boat and uh, it has motor problems, so it has to lay here for a few weeks. <laughs> but it, has a, it had a lot of antennas on the, on the roof of it, so <laughs> they were probably listening to the, the, those stations. How did you find out about the number station? Um, well, yeah, I'm really interested in the, in the shortwave radio, so... And, um, but the number stations... It was more through the internet, I think, like, yeah, surfing obscure websites and stuff like that, and then <laughs> finding this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm really interested in, like, in uh, spy things and more darker sides of, of uh, society. Deep yeah, like spy. Deep web, yeah, it's also cool. Yeah. Hipster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a cool story though about <laughs> language yeah. that I just just I just thought about it, but it was perfect for this night. But I I just n now remember it about this. Um, it was in the sixties they did, did experiments uh, with dolphins. They well they figured out that dolphins were really smart and stuff, so they tried to learn dolphins to speak English. And um, there was even this experiment. Um, it also goes back to the the yeah teaching basic. Um, uh, sounds and, and to, to get it into one language and what it ended up in, in one crazy experiment of uh, a woman living together with a dolphin for four months in a house. They, they, had, they, they bought this uh, villa somewhere on the Caribbean or something and they, they waterproofed the whole house <laughs> and just put a little water, like a meter of water in it and the woman, she lived for four months with the dolphin. But it, it got a bit too, um, yeah. They, they got a g bit too close together, the dolphin and the women. What? So yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a young dolphin, so he well had a lot of it, and it was a it was a it was a guy dolphin, and she was a woman, so well. Yeah. <laughs> but that is yeah. That's the reason. Really <laughs> So well, that's uh, language on dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that, but it, it, it ended really bad. <laughs>